Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you all had a really good Easter weekend. Uh, last week, we got to talk about Good Friday and Easter, and it's an amazing story of how Jesus Christ conquered sin and he conquered death uh, so that we might also. And this week, we're going to be talking about the prodigal son, which is super fitting because we're all kind of stuck at home, quarantined. And also, we talked about it at the Deep Freeze weekend that we went to for all of those who went to that we had a really good time diving into God's Word there and talking about the prodigal son I think we all learned a lot so it'll be good to touch base with that again uh, again I hope you guys are all doing super well this week staying safe staying productive uh, I hope you guys are keeping somewhat of good attitudes I'm always praying for you guys and it's starting to get tougher and tougher as the time goes on but again hope everything's going well I'm gonna open us up in a word of prayer dear Heavenly Father thank you so much for this time that we have to dive into your word, Lord, I uh, pray that you would help us to understand what you have for us. We thank you for your word, Lord, and for what it does to us, for, for its minister, ministry to us. I uh, pray that we would be using our time productively, Lord, spending time with you. I pray that you would give us a thirst and a hunger uh, for spending time with you over this time where it's easy to get distracted and to sort of fill our lives with entertainment. I do pray uh, for a deep hunger and thirst for you. Uh, and also an understanding of what you have for us in this time. Uh, I pray over the next few minutes when we're talking about this that we would all be able to be attentive, Lord, and just receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So like I said, we're going to be in Luke chapter 15 today. Uh, and Luke chapter 15 actually has three parables in it. And the first parable is that of the lost sheep. Second is that of the lost coin. And then the third is the prodigal son, which could also be labeled the lost son. Um, all three of these parables in the entire chapter of Luke 15 emphasize these stories that revolve around the idea of something lost being found. They're awesome stories to get into. I really encourage you guys to go and read the first part of Luke chapter 15. If you guys were at Deep Freeze, we talked about all of these parables. It was a really cool time, awesome to learn. And we are going to, like I said, we're going to be touching base with the parable of the prodigal son this week here but be sure to go and read the rest of Luke chapter 15 on your own. It's not very long. Uh, it's They're great stories. So I encourage you to do that. But we're going to jump right in with Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11 uh, with the prodigal son. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and, began to, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. So this first part of the story is actually pretty grim begins with a son who is trying to claim his inheritance before it's time. Uh, there are a lot of reasons that he might have wanted to do this. Again, this is a story, it's a parable, uh, but there are so many lessons that can be taken away from it. Maybe this son was tired of living under his father's rules, under his father's roof, and he had to, he just wanted to live life on his own, be able to make his own decisions. Uh, maybe he just really wanted to live a party life, and that's why it says he, he wasted all of his money and all of his uh, father's inheritance on reckless living, so that can mean a lot of different things, but probably meant it on things that he shouldn't really be spending money on. Uh, and then a famine arose in that country that he went to. He ran away from his father's house, longing for freedom, and then a very difficult time came and he realized that it wasn't really freedom at all. Uh, it says that he went to a random citizen and asked to be hired to feed the pigs and stuff, and it said he He's in such a desperate position that he was longing to eat what the pigs were eating uh, because of how low he had gotten. So I think that a lot of us can relate to how this son feels. He, he wanted to have freedom. He wanted to be on his own. I know especially growing up, there's, there's a lot of rules in place, whether it's by like your parents or teachers or maybe even some teachings of the Bible that you feel like are holding you back uh, from doing what you want to do. Like I said, we want to do what we want to do. We want to do it when we want to do it, we want to do it, how we want to do it. That's a lot of how we want to do it, but it's the truth. We want to do our own thing. Uh, and sometimes it can feel like these rules are in place to hold us back from freedom. And that's what this son was feeling. 
And that's why he ended up running away from his household, because he wanted that freedom of doing his own thing. But I think the very beginning of this story is trying to help us understand that doing our own thing and being able to do whatever we want, whenever we want to, isn't actually freedom. Uh, he, he thinks that it's freedom, and he, he believes that the best possible thing for his life is to be able to do whatever he wants. Uh, but then we see that the moral of the story is that his life was so much better at home. Uh, these certain things that were set up in his home life, whether it was rules from his father or uh, living in his father's house, they weren't there to hold him back uh, from experiencing an amazing life. They were there to keep him safe. They were there to help him experience the best life possible. Uh, like I said, his freedom leads him to being a slave, literally. He is, he's serving some random citizen, helping feed the pigs. It says, he, he, like I said, he, he wants to eat what the pigs are eating. Uh, and then we're going to continue on reading, and we're really going to focus in on this coming home aspect. I'm not going to get too much into what the other brother is thinking uh, in this whole thing. But I want us to understand that sometimes our idea of freedom is not really what freedom is and that's why we have God's Word and that's why we spend time with God is so that we can sort of get a better gauge of how to live this life and how to experience freedom. Uh, so I'm going to continue reading in verse 17. But when he came to himself he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will rise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his hired servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it, all, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. So the son, like I said before, has realized that his life in his father's house, even the worst possible life in his father's house that he can imagine, is far beyond the life that he's living right now for himself and by himself on his own. And so he decides to come home. And I want you guys to understand that there's so many lessons to be taken away, but I think a really important one is this decision to come home. It, it's not to be overlooked. It's not something small. Uh, it's a huge thing of saying, like, I am going to humble myself, and I'm going to return home. I'm going to go to my father, and I'm going to tell him I was wrong uh, and beg for him to take me back. The, this idea of having a humble heart is something that is extremely lost in our culture today and all around us. There's an idea that we deserve uh, so many different things and I want you guys to know that we don't this is something you can especially learn from our Easter message last week we don't deserve God's grace he's freely going to give it to us and that's what makes this one verse extremely beautiful where, where it says while he was still a ways off his father saw him and came running and then the father gathers the rest of the household and they celebrate the son's return uh, the son's humble heart is rewarded I think a huge moral of this story is that God, the Father, is always going to forgive when we ask for forgiveness. Like I said, He has this free gift of grace for us, but it requires that decision to come home. Just like I said, the Son humbled Himself, uh, and He knew He was going back to His Father, and He was going to ask His Father if He could just be a servant, and that's it, just so that He could have a place to live and have food to eat. That's all He, that's all he wanted, uh, because He knew asking the Father for more didn't make any sense because he had left him and because he didn't deserve it. Um, and I think that's a huge, huge part of this story is realizing that we need to humble our hearts and come home and ask the Father forgiveness. And then he's going to be there to forgive us and to welcome us home and to celebrate with us. Uh, and that's something I want you guys to be thinking about. I know being at home stinks. Uh, and so I'm not, I'm not trying to like coerce you guys into having a good attitude about <laughs> being stuck at home. But while we're stuck at home, we might as well allow it to be a reminder uh, that the Father is calling us home and that there's every opportunity, especially right now, to make a decision to come to Him, uh, to, to spend time in His Word. I mean, if you're, if you're not saved, to make a decision to come to Him for the first time. If you have been saved and you're just now realizing, like, wow, I don't read the Bible ever. I never spend time with God. Now is the time to turn around 
to humble your heart and to come home to the Father because He is waiting for you. He is happy to receive you and celebrate with you guys. Uh, like I said, go and read the rest of this. I'm not going to get too much into it right now. There's The rest of the story sort of gives to the perspective of the other son. And the first two parables are also really important to read. So I want to encourage you guys to go read Luke chapter 15 just any time this week. I know you guys have a lot of time on your hand. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well with school and stuff. Again, if you need anything, please let me know. I'm here for you guys. Uh, if you have my number or I'm on Facebook or Instagram, please contact me if you need anything. I'll be trying to stay in touch with you guys as well, though. Uh, so thank you guys all for coming out. And I'm going to pray us out, and then that'll be it for this week. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for your word and for this story and for the lessons that we get to take away from it. I want to thank you so much for this free gift of grace, Lord. I pray over each and every student and myself that we would receive it, Lord, humbly, that we would not dread your word, Lord. I genuinely pray that you would give us a craving for your word, Lord. Uh, give us a craving for the opportunity to spend time with you and to read your word. Uh, I, again, I, I pray that we would receive this free gift of grace, and Lord, all these days that we're at home and we're kind of stuck, that we would be reminded of how amazing it is to be in your house, Lord, uh, to be in the graces of the Father. Uh, I, I just pray that over each and every student, Lord, and over all of the leaders and everyone watching this, Lord. I, just, I pray that we would receive you, that we would come home and we'd make that decision. And I just pray for safety, Lord, for everybody as we go throughout our weeks. I pray that we'd be able to stay productive. Uh, and keep a good attitude during all this. Thank you so much for the lessons that you have for us. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. I didn't have music this week just because I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. I've been experimenting here and there. Uh, but there will probably be music next week. So thank you guys so much for being here. Have a blessed week. Bye.